to the Ford Fox College Hoops pregame sponsored by Ford. Go further. Another sellout in Omaha. Here to see more history for Doug McDermott. 11 points from 2,500. Final game before Biggie's play as Creighton welcomes Chicago State here on Fox Sports 1. And welcome everyone, I'm Ed Cohen. Great to be joined by the two-time Big Ten Player of the Year, Jim Jackson. As Creighton comes out of the Christmas break, they've won four in a row, and now they welcome Chicago State. There's a lot of buzz in this city because Marquette is coming to town for the Big East opener on Tuesday. For now, though, need to take care of business. Well, two challenges here. At one, you come off the Christmas break. They, you've eaten pretty good. You got presents. Santa Claus was good to you, but you have to focus yourself on this game, and Chicago State is the the opponent you need to concentrate on. You can't look forward to Marquette. You have to take care of business this afternoon. Doug McDermott, we know, can score from anywhere. That includes from beyond the three-point line. But this Creighton team is second in the country in three-point makes. And we talk about McDermott. We also talk about Ethan Rogge at 6'7". Well, what you see with Creighton is the end result, the ball going in. But two things are critical to becoming a very good three-point shooting team. Space. That allows you now to move the ball with, with freedom and get high percentage shots. But the Passes have to be on time and on target because as a shooter, that's where you want it in your shooting pocket. And there is Ethan Rogge, 612 of his 664 shots made have been from three-point range. Chicago State this season, five home wins, seven road losses. A group that's playing its first season in the WAC, and they're led by a guy who wears number 33, a guy named Pippen. It's Quinton Pippen, Scotty's nephew. It sounds familiar, and I had this squad earlier in the year against Ohio State. They've come a long way. This young man can score. He can shoot it behind the three-point line. Three times this year, he's made more than no, at least five three-pointers. So you got to keep your eye on Quinton Pippen. Quinton Pippen, nearly 15 points per game. He is a lefty, so not all the way like his famous uncle, but he has led the way for the Cougars and trying to play a tough one here on the road against Creighton. They love him here at Century League Center in Omaha. Another sellout here for the Blue Jays before we head to New Year's Eve in the matchup with Marquette. Cougars and Blue Jays up next. Creighton is fourth in the country in home attendance, over 17,000 on average, and today the opponent is Chicago State as we head towards the new year. Head coach of the Cougars is Tracy Dildy, fourth year leading the way. Prior to this, stints with University of Illinois Chicago, DePaul, Ole Miss, and Auburn, among others. And the lineup for the Cougars, they're led by Clark Rosenberg and Quinn Pippen. Matt Ross has provided big minutes as well at six foot eight. He can step out and shoot it. On the other side, Year number four for Greg McDermott, leading Creighton. Of course, he's got his son as a star. Five trips to the NCAA tournament in all, three in Northern Iowa, and two here with the Blue Jays. Same starting lineup for the fifth straight game for Creighton. Ethan Rogge took the spot of Will Artino. Artino's been much better off the bench with nearly eight per game. And Rogge, along with McDermott, two big guys who can step out and shoot it. This was the Big East preseason poll, and Creighton was picked third behind Marquette and Georgetown. Of course, it's going to be one against three two days from now on New Year's Eve. Villanova losing to Syracuse yesterday, and Butler with some very good wins, 10 in all, and they were picked ninth. Well, the question was going to be how would Creighton, Butler, Xavier kind of fit in. Now, we haven't seen Big Ten, play, I mean, Big East play yet. So the question is still there, but early on, They've made strides to become better, better teams. And I think the experience that both of these teams have, in particular Creighton and Butler, allowed them to fit into a Big East conference, I think, a lot easier. Doug McDermott jumping center. Didn't do that until Artino was sent to the bench. So they've stuck with him, and he wins his fourth tip. Not bad after getting the nod against Long Beach State. Yeah, let's keep our eye on a couple of things there. For, if you're Chicago, say you want to force turnovers. Did you see McDermott? No. Now, that's one thing you don't Early in the game, you got to locate where McDermott is at. But in order for them, Chicago to stay, stay, stay in the game, they have to be able to force turnovers and then convert. Well, Ross misfires on their first attempt. So McDermott now eight points from 2,500. And Creighton again going to work. We're 40 seconds in, 3-0 in favor of the Blue Jays. McDermott 
looking there, didn't have anything, so he gets it out to Gibbs. McDermott now in the lane, lobs out of a double for Rocky. Great in the corner, that could translate to the next level. That whole three-point shot was created because there was a miscommunication. Two guys flew out at McDermott. Now you make pass, pass, and you're open in the corner. That's what having a player of McDermott's caliber does for you. Not necessarily scoring, but attracting the attention of the opposing defense. Back the other way, here's Rosenberg. The floater is good on the baseline for Clark Rosenberg, who opened the season with 27 in the opener against Indiana. And we talked about Pippen in the open, but Rosenberg showed that he can put the ball in the basket in a tough environment against. Nice cut, Grant Gibbs with the flush, and it was Rogge who set him up. And that's how Creighton will beat you. They're not going to beat you one-on-one -on -one off the dribble. They're going to be patient in their offensive sets. They're going to pass the basketball, move the defense, and once you fall asleep, that's when they can catch you back door with an open lane. His team is fun to watch, not so much fun to defend. <laughs> But that was the genesis of the Chicago State practice yesterday. Need to get out on these shooters. And we've seen Rocky and McDermott already hit from three. This is Ross from three. He knocks it down from the corner. And Chicago State hanging tough, trailing eight to five. And now needing to get back on defense because Creighton can move it up fast. Chapman lobbing out for Managa. In for McDermott, one-on-one -on -one with Ross, draws his second defender, and it doesn't matter, he converts. Well, that's a difficult matchup. When I'm talking to the coaching staff at Chicago State, I, yes, I, are you going to double McDermott on the post? Said, no, we're going to play straight up. They have too many really good shooters. Let's see if we can force them into some tough shots. That time a little easier than expected for McDermott to get inside, but great move. 10 to 5 in favor of Creighton. This is Eddie Denard inside, couldn't get the bounce, and Gibbs leads Creighton on the break. Doug McDermott, six points from 2,500, working hard inside, two free throws coming up. Doug McDermott, he can score, he can also create. We've seen both of that so far. Well, you see McDermott working without the ball. Patience is a key right here. He allows his screen to be set, sets his feet now, able to get an open shot. But then also right here, you're going to see dive now. You have two guys on him. That creates opportunities for his teammates to knock down three. So that's the beauty when you have a potent offensive player as McDermott. He draws so much attention. And now this is where, as broadcasters, we hope not to jinx him because he is five consecutive free throws we, away from a Creighton record, and now you, it's four. You, <laughs> you, I'm not jinxing. You are the one. But now that's, I mean, what more can you say about what he's been able to accomplish in his college career? Yeah. I mean, the superlative will continue to go on. I think what you can say about him, he's a winner. And he came back because he truly enjoyed playing college basketball, but for the love of his teammates as well. It's a great group. Tremendous chemistry from these seniors. Doug McDermott has already scored seven. Chicago State going to work. How about that pass from Pippen to Denard? Eyes behind his head. But he saw the play to Denard. He saw where he was at on the court. And if you keep an eye, he looked behind and made it right on time and on target. Nice little bounce pass inside. But Chicago State, if you think about it, they're Defensively, they need to tighten up on some things, but offensively, they're moving the ball around. They're getting high quality shots, so they're hanging in a little bit at the beginning. Chicago State from the south side, located where the Dan Ryan Expressway splits off. School of over 4,600, and the first year on the WAC, they took the Great West Tournament title last year. Didn't make the NCAA tournament, but got into the postseason in the CollegeInsider.com tournament. And they experienced postseason play. They got rings, and they're looking to build on that this season. And the only way you can build is you win. You develop some kind of system, some kind of uh, aura about your program, and that's what they're trying to build here. Then you can go out and kind of recruit the kind of players you think fit that system. Here comes McDermott. He knocks down the three. Ten points in just over three minutes, and he's one point shy of 2,500. Offensive execution, patience. That's something that a veteran type of team will continue to do. And that's why this Creighton team is so tough to guard. Rosenberg on the pull-up, knocks it down in the face of Grant Gibbs. Clark Rosenberg with his second bucket. Came in averaging 14 per game. Here goes McDermott, looking for 2,500. Almost. Knocked out of bounds. The referees confirm. It's going to stay with the Blue Jays. Blue Jay basketball. 
Good push of the ball that time by Chapman, forcing the defense below the free throw line. When you give it to a trailing McDermott, now he's one on one and he can get to the basket. He didn't make it, but it was a good push by Chapman. Tripped away by Rosenberg, lands out of bounds, going to stay with Creighton. Ball again, out of bounds. Doug McDermott, Big East preseason player of the year, twice was Missouri Valley player of the year. Gibbs crafty, looking to get that bounce back. McDermott. Thought about firing, Denard got to him in time. Around the screen, McDermott for Gibbs. In for Will Artino, who just came in. Took a step before the hook, he's called for the steps. Excellent post position that time by Artino, but a little anxious with his feet. Not allowing himself to get set, but Artino playing a lot better. Accepting his role coming off the bench, probably more comfortable in that role, not as much pressure. Ross with a hand in his face, knocks it down over Gibbs. Second three for the 6'8 senior, Matt Ross. Well, we're talking about the shooting prowess of McDermott. You see a turnover right now by Creighton, but Ross knocking down open threes. McDermott has scored 10. He's one away from 2,500. We'll see if he gets it when we come back to Omaha. Welcome back to Fox College Troops presentation of Big East Basketball brought to you by the New York Life Insurance Company. Brayton up on Chicago State 15 to 12. Doug McDermott has hit three of his first four shots as he approaches another monster milestone. But all great players have multiple ways to score. As you see Doug McDermott going into the post using excellent footwork and speaking of footwork, shooters, get your feet set. Now you receive the ball, you can catch and shoot in rhythm. That's why it's so tough to guard McDermott. McDermott, if you're a second late, the shot is going up. 24-99, already the most in Creighton history. One point from 2,500. Three did it in 2011. Charles Jenkins, Jimmer Fredette, Andrew Goudlock of Charleston. They were the last. And this will go back to the Blue Jays. Four and a half gone by. Good shooting for both teams. Chicago State's now four of seven. Creighton has opened this game five of six. Both teams finding the basket early. It, it's the matter of which team can get consecutive defensive stops. Now that allows you to kind of either get back in the game and take the lead of your Chicago State, but for Creighton, kind of increase upon the lead. McDermott wants it. He's got it. Three pointer for Doug McDermott, and he's eclipsed 2,500 for his career. Didn't know if it'd come early or late. Comes five minutes in. Well, it's, when you're a shooter and scoring, you know you're going to get shots. You're patient and, and picking and choosing. And right now, executing excellently, excellent, <laughs> excellently for Creighton. We'll give you a mulligan on that mulligan, one. Mulligan, yeah. McDermott it's, again from the top. It drains another. He is red hot. Five of his first six. Is it that easy? I mean, he makes it look so easy. In transition, now you have the trailer. Whether you're coming off a double and half quarter in transition, he makes the game look extremely easy, but all accomplished by having really good teammates that know how to find him. 16 points in less than six minutes of action here against Chicago State. And Rosenberg is called for the travel. And this was the one that got him over 2,500. Just a little slide to the left off of the screen. As a defender, you can't go underneath. You have to trail over the top. And in transition, somebody has to point out where's McDermott. All right, right now, communication-wise, Chicago State is not on the same page because they're allowing Doug McDermott to kind of pick and choose wherever he wants to catch yeah. and shoot. Graydon, we mentioned their three-point shooting prowess. Second most makes in the country to Elon. They made five already. Make it six out of six attempts. Jahens Managa knocks it down. Twenty-four to twelve, Blue Jays. They have come out of that last media timeout on a 9-0 run. Threes for McDermott, and then one for Managa. They let it play. Rosenberg wants it in the corner. Leans in on Avery Dingman, and he's called for the steps. Well, nice defense that time. Not over committing on the closeouts by Creighton. By Creighton now. Keep your eye here on the baseline. As the closeout occurs, now you utilize the baseline as another defender. And at that time, you're able to create a turnover. Avery Dimmon, he's a junior. 
They love his three-point shooting. He's versatile on both ends, and they hope that they can get him and Isaiah Zierden some more minutes in a game like this. And we see Zach Hansen, number 40, also in for the Blue Jays. Well, talking to Coach McDermott, it's all about the, the bench continuing to get better. You have to have something you can pull from, in, in particular when you start to play in conference. McDermott against Ross. Not much room there, so it goes out to Dingman. Gets past Pippen and draws the push on Quinton Pippen, the senior from Arkansas. Yeah, the Cougars played excellent defense for 32 seconds, but then just not sliding your feet. You calls a uh, foul right at the end of the shot clock. Only the second on Chicago State as we look at McDermott so far. Five of six shooting. He's knocked down all four three-point attempts. Eddie Denard, hand in his face, in and out, almost went down. Are you surprised it didn't go in? I am. First three-point miss in seven attempts for Creighton. 24 to 12 Blue Jays, under 13 to play here in the first in Omaha. The adjustment the Cougars have to make is that you have to get up into Doug McDermott, make him a driver. Not that he can't do it, but you want to run him off of the three-point line and make him beat you by getting the ball to the basket. Good transition defense. McDermott draws the double. Devin Brooks back a point guard off the dribble for three. That's way off the mark. And back comes Nate Duhon leading the way for Chicago State. The trailer, Corey Gray, knocks it down from three. For Gray, that's his 17 three on the year. And that was excellent transition offense that time by Chicago State. Get down the court quickly. You play against a non-set defense. It opens up for a nice little high percentage three-point shot. Well, pass off, gets it back from the foul line, doesn't get the bounce. Brooks fighting on the baseline. Did he get a timeout call? No. Out of bounds. It'll go back to Chicago State. Doug McDermott has eclipsed 2,500 for his career, and that's just the beginning. Five of eight shooting, four three-pointers. He's got 16, and the Blue Jays are rolling up by nine on Chicago State. Recent players to hit 2,500. J.J. Redick back at Duke. Tyler Hansborough got there. So did Steph Curry, over 2,600. And not Jim, not Jimmy, but Jimmer for debt. 25.99, and you can add Doug McDermott to the list. He'll get a rest now, but 25.05, 64 have done it. Elgin Baylor is stuck on 2,500 by the time he was done playing, and now Doug McDermott has moved up the list. The beauty about a player like Doug McDermott, uh, Steph Curry, Jimmer Fredette is how they accumulate these points within the team structure. Yeah, you're not out there trying to force and go for self. You're utilizing the offense and the skill set of your teammates to get high percentage shots. You're able to score at a higher clip. Eight baskets for Creighton, eight assists. You talked about it. I mean, this team is not going to really beat you off the dribble a lot, but what they're going to beat you with is their mind and their passing. Quentin Pippen. Oh. He'll launch from just about anywhere. That was across the Nebraska-Iowa border. That's a little NBA range right there. Last seven baskets combined for these two teams have been from three. Four for Creighton, now three for Chicago State. Active hands, Kurt Karras. It goes to Hansen in the corner. Isaiah Zierden doesn't get the shooter's roll, and Pippen pulls it down. And this is when Chicago State has to try to exploit. Try to get something quick in transition and not Force Creighton to guard you east and west side to side. That can open up driving lanes, but also, as we see, it opens up nice opportunities to get some high-quality jump shots. Eddie Denard rolls off the pick, forcing the pass out to Duhon. Couldn't hang on. There's Quentin Pippins, Scotty Pippins' nephew, and looking from deep. Look at where he shot it from. I mean, that was comfortable. I mean, he had in his mind the way he set up that he was going to shoot, you know, when he received it. Senior from Hamburg, Arkansas. They've nicknamed him the Junkyard Dog because of his defense. Pretty good shooter, too. Austin Chadman couldn't convert from the elbow. And Chicago State, 24 to 18. They're within six as we near the midway point of this first half. 6 0 run over the last 90 plus seconds. Well, the Cougars are not going to outscore Creighton. Just keep that in mind. But you have to get consecutive stops, and then you have to make shots. Denard from two point range. Weak side rebound for Chapman. Leads Creighton up the floor. Doug McDermott getting a rest right now. 
Zierden works it up top to Dingman, gets around Denard, gets by Pippen, couldn't convert off the window, and now Chicago State looking to push off the miss. Duhan on the pull-up. Chicago State within four. It's an 8-0 run. Hang around. That's what you want to do if you're Chicago State. That was an excellent, I say, decision by Duhan because you're in transition. Now you have a chance, if you miss, to get an offensive rebound. Austin Chapman will be at the line. Push inside on Marcus Starks. Oh, in transition, Dingman misses. But now you get out and run. You fill the lanes and you exploit the defense to see if you can get a high-quality shot. And because you do have numbers, like I said, if you miss, the opportunity to get an offensive rebound is there. Chapman shoots it at 81 percent, knocks down the first. And here comes Mr. McDermott, along with Grant Gibbs. He'll take the spots of Hanson, Zierden, as well as Dingman. Managa re-enters for Creighton as well. Chapman from the same high school as Darren Williams. The Colony in Texas. 26 to 20 Blue Jays over the Cougars as we pass the midway point of this first half. Offensive foul, Offensive foul call, and it's on Kirk, Kirk Karras, the freshman for Chicago State. Yeah, and right now, offensively, Creighton is in a really good rhythm. You'd like to see defensive, defensively kind of lock in a little bit more. I mean, you're talking about getting ready to play in the Big East and defensively I think is where you really have to hone your skill set because you have bigger stronger some more athletic teams and it's going to be a challenge down right there on Karras his second in a row reaching in on Chapman they'll enter the gate against Marquette two days from now Grayton had a tough one at St. Joe's. They pulled that one out. Two losses this year against San Diego State and George Washington. GW held Doug McDermott to 2 of 12 shooting. Switched their defenses quite a bit. And you figure coaches will watch tapes like that and try to figure out how to slow them down as the inbounds is batted down. Chicago State gets it back. Well, you want to try to keep Creighton off balance, but uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. And Marquette can do that with their physical nature. They have forwards. Oh. Imagine that one went down. Oh, you have fours that can switch. They're interchangeable. So when you're running a pick and roll with McDermott now, you have a big body on him constantly. So let's get past this game here, but that will be very interesting to see how that matchup works out. Duhon fouled on the way up, going for three. It's on Grant Gibbs. Up, they're going to say it was not in the process of shooting. Let's take a look at it. Where is that? not a foul on the shot he was in the air coming down Gibbs looking like he caught a break this is Pippen in the corner they get three there <laughs> Quentin <laughs> Pippen <laughs> three the hard way second three for Pippen away from the basketball McDermott and Ross jostling at the block and the foul's called on Matt Ross. And very good execution underneath out of bounds. Coaches work on this all the time, but just a screen inside. No one communicating for Creighton off the ball. You have to locate your shooters. We talked about locating and knowing where McDermott is. Well, you, you better pretty much find Pippen as well. Came in having made 27 threes. He's knocked down two so far today. Creighton by three, and it's going the other way. Movement on Ethan Rogge trying to free up McDermott. And then see how much Rogge moves right here, not being set. Just, just that little lean in the leg causes the foul. But I'll be honest with you, this is a very good test mentally for Trey. Yeah, okay. Because you look at the Chicago State team, you said, eh, the roster, Trey should win this easily, but they're feisty. Okay, they're going to force you to think and play. They may not be as big, but. They're playing, they're moving, and they're forcing Creighton to be a little bit uncomfortable offensively and defensively. Duhon in too deep. Starks going against McDermott, leans in, couldn't convert. And Gibbs off the miss, leads Creighton up the floor. Kept control. Gibbs to the basket, absorbs the contact, and a foul. Grant Gibbs will be at the line for two. And look at what Chicago State has done in trying to limit Doug McDermott so far. Hasn't worked, but it's worked the last couple of times. Defensively for Creighton, the thing that they do extremely well, they're not 
locked down one-on-one -on -one defenders. Yeah. But they space them to use the court and angles correctly. So now, t team defensively, you can be just as effective as having a stopper or two on the wing if you play correct defense, you're always in position, and you use the baseline and the sidelines to your advantage. Clark Rosenberg back in for Chicago State. Gibbs will have another free throw. Creighton has missed its last seven shots. Chicago State in the midst of an 11-2 run. Gibbs knocks down the second. 27-23 Blue Jays. 8-13 to go in this first half. And, and not making an excuse for Creighton, but games like this are a little bit tough. It's a 4 o'clock start. Yeah. It's a little bit different. You come off the Christmas break. You're preparing for now entering into Marquette in the, in the Big East. So you have a lot of things to focus in on. And this feisty Chicago State team. Making shots, Pippen again, makes another one. And apparently, the bank is open on Sundays. What do you have to lose if you're Chicago State? You come out and play free, okay? A game you're not supposed to win, but you play. These guys have pride. Three threes for Pippen. It's back to a one-point game. Managa, there's a reason he's the fan favorite. The Canadian Red Bull, for his energy, knocks it down. The ability to respond. That's what good teams do. You know, you know a team will go on a run. You, you hone it back in. The way you negate a run, you get a big basket. You get a stop. In the corner, Rosenberg thought about firing. Reset here for Chicago State. That three for Managa breaks the 0 for 8 drought. Shot clock at 10 for Chicago State. Rosenberg absorbs the contact, will be at the line for two as he's fouled by Managa on the way up. Each team has knocked down nine threes. Don't know if he called that one, though. It went in. Managa knocks one down. It's a four-point game. And welcome back. Creighton up four points, 30-26 on Chicago State. I want you to take a look a little bit at Doug McDermott as he, as he works to get over this. We freeze it right here, a little bit more right here. I want you to keep your eye on Doug McDermott, and now he's going to set a screen right here and get his man open and pop back for the three, but two defensive guys are going to go back in the play because you have the ability to have other players that can score, but it's patience here by Doug McDermott. Lack of communication, but look where the pass was at. The pass was on time, on target, so he could catch, set his feet, and let it go. Two shots. 16 points so far. He's knocked down five shots, four coming from three. Questions about how he'll transferred to the NBA. Of course, he decided to stay in school as Rosenberg knocks down the first. But he's a cerebral guy who can score from just about anywhere. And more importantly, he can create his own shot. Well, he has a skill set that each NBA team needs. Now, it's a matter of who you get drafted by, what system you play in yeah. that best fits the way you play. But the way the game is today, it's not as physical as it was when I played. The freedom of movement is there. Shot creativity is now a premium. And a guy like Doug McDermott, playing within the right system, can you imagine him at San Antonio? Yeah. Okay, Utah, the way they run things, okay? He can fit. Gibbs in the corner. He knocks down the three. Bumps the lead back up to six, 33-27. I think Popovich would like that too, Jim. You better believe it. But, you know, for McDermott, of course, he would want to get drafted a lot higher than probably than where San Antonio will be in their drafting position. Graydon's 8 of 10 from 3. Chicago State also really good. 6 of 11. Pippins hit 3 of them. This is Rosenberg in the corner. He knocks down another. So Clark Rosenberg has scored 8. He knocks down his first 3. And Coach McDermott can't be too happy that time because the back line uh, for Creighton just fell asleep. And you allow Rosenberg to have an easy spot up 3 in the corner. Under six to go, first half. Three-point lead for Creighton. Managa this time in the right corner. He drains it. They're nine of 11 from beyond the arc. And what you didn't see was deep post position that time by McDermott, which drew the, the eyes of Chicago State. Now he opened up a driving lane for uh, a driving kick. Chicago State has answered in these situations. They give up a three. They've answered right back. Greg McDermott hoping the Blue Jays can get a stop. Shot clock coming down, it's a 10. Excellent help defense that time by Chapman, cutting off the drive. Five to shoot, Corey Gray against Chapman off the spin. 
came up short. Artino rips down the board, and Chapman leads them up the floor. Chapman looking for some room. Artino sets the screen. Brayton a bit out of sorts right now with the six-point lead. Under five to go in the first half. Final game before Big East play. McDermott rolls around, gets a big screen, gets freed up, comes up short, hit the rim twice, rebound for Corey Gray. Even though McDermott missed Chicago State still, if you're going to switch that screen and roll, somebody has to be up on Doug McDermott. When he comes off the screen, you can't allow him to have that much space to shoot a shot. That's what Tracy Dildy said in practice. Whatever you do, get out there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Match up with these shooters. Gray against McDermott, takes him off the dribble, gets blocked by Artino. And then Chapman in front of his head coach kept it in bounds. Managa in for McDermott, stripped and a foul. Contact, it's on Chicago State. And first of all, Doug McDermott did an excellent job of using his height to his advantage and not overreacting to the move. And then Artino on the back end. This is what's called good team defense, not getting locked into the lane, knowing exactly where the ball was at. You're able to get there in position to get a block shot. So here's McDermott at the line. This has been a three-point shooting display. Creighton's 9 of 12, Chicago State 7 of 12, and from two-point range, Blue Jays have shot 25%. Cougars are 3 of 9 as McDermott knocks down the front end, earns himself one more. And you're ringing the new year with a full day of Big East basketball as McDermott knocks down the second. All 10 teams will be in action, including Creighton and Marquette at 9 o'clock local time, 10 Eastern, and that's going to be Tuesday, December 31st, and this place will be absolutely off the hook. The anticipation, the excitement to bring those storied colleges into Century Lincoln Arena. That, that's what you talk about when you talk about Big East basketball. Okay? And, and, and playing against those teams that you're accustomed to seeing on TV and now you're playing against that high level competition. But I do really believe the way this great team is built that they can slide and fit right in. Yeah. I mean they have experience, they have shooters, they have size, they have really good ball handling and passing ability. Five games, ten teams all one day. And not just a great game for Creighton against Marquette, picked to win the Big East in the preseason, but it's also the debut. Greg McDermott said it's going to be an historic event here in Omaha. Chicago State with the ball. They're down 38-30. to 30. Next whistle sends us to break. Shot clock at nine. This is Pippen. Against Dingman, takes him off the dribble, got stripped, it falls to Zierden. And Creighton off the turnover, number four on Chicago State, up the floor, Managon, no, but he's fouled by Karras. Chicago State, though, hanging in this game. They made seven threes, the latest from Clark Rosenberg. 38 to 30, Creighton, as we go to break. Welcome back to Omaha. Creighton up on Chicago State, 38 to 30. Doug McDermott off to a great start. He's eclipsed 2,500 career points, but Chicago State hanging in this game from three-point range. They made seven, even off glass, but the Blue Jays even better. You, you have to keep in mind that this Creighton team is number one in the Big East in three-point shooting. They attempt 26, they make 10, about 42% clinic. They're 15 in the country in regards to where they rank. So. That's the key to their offense, and you can do so many other things off of that. Ed, by continuing to keep a defense spread for Chapman, now you can penetrate and get inside. That's when you get those dri dri dribble drives, contact, get to the free throw line. Artino knocks down the front end, earns himself one more. First point for the junior. Talk to Greg McDermott about this. Artino started the first seven games. They brought Roggy in to start the last five now. And Artino's been much better as a reserve. Nearly eight points per game. He's brought some energy. He's been more comfortable. Well, that's the word, comfortable. The pressure is not on him to kind of do everything. And I think in reading some articles, what he talked about was that he put more pressure on himself to go in there and perform. Now, coming off the bench, he can just be who he is. A player that has energy, effort, 
and gives you all he got when, he, when he's on the court. Chicago State has not scored in the paint. Creighton with four points there. Shot clock at six. This is Duhon in traffic. He converts with the shot clock winding down. Wow. Duhon just tells Martina, look, guy, excellent deed, but better off. I mean, he did a good job of kind of corralling him, but he was able to be creative and still get the shot off. First bucket in the paint for Chicago State. Under three to play in the first half. It's an eight-point lead for Creighton. Final non-conference game before Marquette comes to town, New Year's Eve. Devin Brooks in some traffic, pulls it out. Managon, no look for McDermott, knocked down, comes out to Karras, and the Cougars looking to run. Good transition D there by Creighton. Yeah, tough passing angle that time, trying to force feed the post. Eddie Denard facing up against Artino. Little head fake, way off the mark, and Brooks with some numbers for Creighton. Leaves it back for Zierden. He had nothing. Reset here as they go down to McDermott. Brooks cut off by Pippen. Catch and shoot for Managa. He's had the hot hand. He knocks down his fourth three of the game. He's got 12. Just so tough when you, you think you have the offense under control. And another player just steps out and just knocks down a dagger three when you feel you have momentum on your side. But right here, patience inside right here, a little hesitation, and then create space enough to get the little runner. But on offense for Creighton right now, moving the basketball. The ability to set your feet, be patient. Man, it got just knocking it down in rhythm. That last foul on Doug McDermott, team foul number six on Creighton. Chicago State's committed nine. Under 90 seconds to go before the break. Pippen fires over McDermott, didn't have much beyond that, barely grazed the net. Well, that, that's a tough shot because you can get that shot anytime. You want to, the success you've had, as you said, almost turn over here if you're Chicago oh, in transition. Two on one, Rosenberg from Karras converts off the window. And bad passing there by Crane leads to points. Another turnover. Here come the Cougars. Three on two, Pippen inside. In and out, rebound Denard, right back up and in. And a foul. Eddie Denard will have a chance at three. And the Cougars not going away yet inside the final minute of this first half. And that's very important that you try to get on the run if you're Chicago State. You get out of transition, you get an offensive rebound, you get some momentum going into halftime. Momentum gives you confidence. Timeout with Denard coming up at the free throw line. Welcome back to Omaha. Creighton with the 43-36 lead. Final minute of this first half. But if you're Tracy Dildy's team, keep in mind, they played Cincinnati earlier this week. They were out-rebounded 69-21. That was the margin. And he said he couldn't enjoy Christmas. Well, his team has come out. They're still losing the battle of the boards, but they're playing with energy, and they're in this game in Omaha. Well, this team is getting out rebounded at 9.2 rebounds a game. So you're basically spotting your opponent. But yeah. when they are rebounding, creating turnovers, now you can get out and score. That takes a lot of pressure off of your half-court sets to be perfect every time to score. And, and that's why they've been able to hang around in this first half, in particular the last minute, creating turnovers. You get out and run, now you're able to score. Good at the free throw. So 43 to 36, Creighton. And now the press for Chicago State. Chapman with the speed breaks it. Underneath to Hansen. He converts off the window. First points for Zach Hansen. That was the first two-point field goal for Creighton since, get this, 17.45 to go in the first half. So it's been quite some time, over 17 minutes, since they made a shot from inside the arc. Timeout with the Blue Jays up by nine. Fox 
College Hoops returns next as Georgia Tech takes on Charlotte in the final non-conference game for the Yellow Jackets. Coverage begins after our game here on Fox Sports 1. Ed Cohen, Jim Jackson, our entire Fox Sports 1 crew from Omaha, Doug McDermott. Eclipsing 2,500 points. That was earlier in this game. Needed 11. He has now scored 18 on five of nine shooting. He's knocked down four threes. But the story as of late has been Chicago State hanging tough. They've knocked down seven threes. And their defense has played a role. Last couple of possessions, seven Creighton turnovers in this game have led to 10 points for the Cougars. And as a coaching staff, you look for many wins. And for Chicago State, if you can get a score here, keep it under 10 points going into halftime, you've accomplished something here. Because you could have been down a lot more, but you fought your way back in the game. So it's going to take a score, get a stop, you walk out of, half, out of here at halftime with a really good feeling about yourself. Controlled near midcourt by Pippen. Shot clock halfway down. Yeah. Creighton with the nine point lead. Yeah. Pippen gets around a screen, fires for three. That's short. Rebound Denard blocked by Hansen, trying to save it. Could not do so. Good hustle that time by Creighton. Good help defense once again inside. You know, knowing being in the proper position, playing defense without fouling. Still, another chance for Chicago State. You know, you're down nine points now. Or do you get a chance to score going, get it to seven, get it to six possibly? Referees are going to go over to the far side. They turn the shot clock off, even though Hansen blocked that shot. And the question is, did Hippens three grace the rim before that block. So they're going to go look it over and see if it should be off and whether Chicago State has the ball or whether they should have just a little bit of time to shoot. Let's take another look. Let's take a look at this angle and see if we can see the ball if it changes direction on its down flight. Yeah, right there. It looked like it grazed the side of the rim. If you watch the direction of the basketball, it changes. Instead of dropping right down at an angle, it kind of pops back out a little bit. They originally put six seconds on the shot clock. They've taken that off, so it will be Chicago State with 11.8 to go, and they can hold for one. And I would imagine that if the coaches work on end-of-half situations. You want to go into your attack at about eight seconds, yeah. which allows you to get a good shot, plus maybe a tip in without allowing Creighton, if you don't turn it over, to get a shot at the rim. Chicago State 0-7 on the road this season. 5-0 at home. They played some tough games, took DePaul to overtime. We're close with Illinois in the final eight minutes. And now a chance to carve into this nine-point great lead just before the break. And Greg McDermott starting to empty his bench. Don't want Will Artino to get into any foul trouble. So he's brought in Alex Olsen. Rosenberg has it. Final 10 seconds here in the first half in Omaha. Using a screen. Got checked off the spin. Rosenberg. They call the foul with three seconds to go. A little bailout there on Alex Olson. Alex Olson tried to play straight up. And let's see if his lower body, see just that little lean right there. It, it causes the foul. Now, is it a tough foul? Yes, it is. Yeah. But it's still contact that was initiated that time by Rosenberg. He's an 80% free throw shooter. He's got two here, and he knocks down the first. You know, talking to the coaching staff here at Chicago said, said, listen, we've been playing better basketball, in particular on the road. At the beginning of the year, we're trying to figure out who we are, but as of late, we've been more competitive, in particular, when we go into some of these bigger schools, we play with a lot more confidence. Another coming for Rosenberg. They'll open whack play at Idaho on January 4th. Last test before then, Rosenberg now has 12 points, three seconds to go. It's a seven-point great league. Chadman for McDermott at the buzzer. No. 
Doug McDermott was a great start, finishes with 18 first half points. But at the break, here in Omaha, Creighton 45 and Chicago State 38. Coming up after this break, we'll take you back to Los Angeles and our Fox Studios. McDermott eclipses 2,500. It's a seven point game at the break. Century League Center in Omaha, Creighton up on Chicago State, 45 to 38 at the break. Ed Cohen, two-time Big Ten Player of the Year, Jim Jackson with you. Creighton knocked down 10 threes in his first half, but as the half went along, it was pretty clear. Chicago State, with its defense, was going to make this interesting, and they have. Well, Ed, that's the difference. And you say, well, how Chicago State was able to hang in the game? Well, you forced seven turnovers, but then you're able to convert that to 10 points. Key for you. But also, normally a 33% shooting team behind the arc, 7 for 14, that's 50%. Now you give yourself a chance to be in the game, and offensively for Creighton, they do what they do best. Yeah. They shoot, they spread you out from behind the three-point line, 10 for 15, and then McDermott. We were counting the 2,500. I don't know if he was, but he got it out the way. Quite a half for Doug McDermott. He scored 18 points. The big story was three-point shooting, 10 for Creighton, 7 for Chicago State, and the Blue Jays with the edge on the glass after Chicago State really struggled against Cincinnati. Well, Creighton, next time they play, it's against Marquette on New Year's Eve, and we wondered what would happen with a game like this. You need a tune-up coming off the Christmas break, but you don't want to look too far ahead. Right now, they have some work to do. Have a lot of work to do, and i like to see in the second half the defensive intensity pick up for Creighton, get multiple stops. Now you can stretch that lead out a little bit more. Halftime here in Omaha with the Blue Jays leading the Cougars by seven. And some halftime entertainment. You could do that back in the day, right? Blue Jays. Jays up at the break. Fans of all ages have come out to see this one in Omaha. Creighton with the 45 to 38 lead on Chicago State. 18 first half points for Doug McDermott. Managa knocked down four threes. Rosenberg and Pippen very efficient from the outside in keeping the Cougars right on the cusp. Well, your two main, main scores are kind of doing their job, not too far off their season averages, of course. And you talked about Doug McDermott and what he's been able to do in the first half. Again, I'd like to see maybe a little bit more points in the paint for Creighton right now because right in the first half, he only had six. That could be a big key for this Creighton team as you look forward. How do you manufacture points against a bigger, stronger team? And right now, in the second half, maybe they can use their size for their event. And there is Quentin Pippen. Nephew of Scotty Pippen knocked down three three-pointers. Coming back to Creighton, they were 10 of 15 from three, only three of nine from two-point range, as you mentioned, trying to get the ball inside against an undersized team. And, and that's a good and bad thing because the three-point shots they were able to get were really good shots. It was off a really good ball move and a player move. But again, dribble drive, post-ups here in their second shot. You like to see those hard-to-get baskets for Creighton, because they're gonna have to manufacture a lot of that, I do believe, during the Big East Conference season. Couple of players who sat many minutes in the first half with two fouls, Ross for Chicago State, Rocky for Creighton. Back out there as we start the second. Ed Cohen, Jim Jackson with you here on Fox Sports 1. Not much room for Rosenberg there, so reset for Corey Gray, the point guard. A lot of ball handlers on this team, but Gray's done much of it the last few games. Pippen stop and go. Ross deep in the corner. Short on that one, and the rebound finally falls to Managa. Solid defensive possession that time coming out the half for Creighton. Managa on that first half, 12 points on four three-pointers. Creighton starting five out there after Rocky replaced Artino a couple of games ago. This is Gibbs on a broken play. Managa wide open at the wing. Drains his fifth three of the day. Well, instead of Managa coming to the basket, he maintained his space. So now on the dribble drive, the pass was available. The shot was there. A lot of players would have crept in a little bit more and taken that advantage away. 11 of 16 from beyond the arc. And Creighton's back up by 10, 48 to 38. 
Here's Gray with some room, knocks it down for three. A nice screen set right there, and he is able to drain it off the bounce. Yeah, Chapman is saying, my bad, knowing he probably wanted to get over the top of the screen, but got a little lazy and went underneath. The three-point shooting display continues on both sides to start the second half. Managan gets a screen from Rogge. Chapman looking for McDermott. He's fronted by Pippen, so it goes to Gibbs. Off the fake, draws the double. Managa one more time. Too strong. Gibbs, offensive board. Reset here for Chapman. His three, in and out, and Ross there for the rebound. Yeah. A chance for Chicago State to kind of get out, cut into this lead a little bit more. Let's see offensively if they execute and try to get Gray into, or Matt Ross into a pick and roll situation. If not, take a shot. <laughs> Gray couldn't convert there. Creighton is led by as many as 12. Chicago State has trailed this entire game. McDermott charged out of the gate, eclipsing 2,500 in the opening minutes. Draws a double from behind. Rosenberg came to help. McDermott has scored 18 points. He's knocked down five shots, four from three. On the feed there from Managa. He's fouled as he knifed into the lane by Gray. Number zero, Corey Gray. That's his Knocking down three-point shots, dribble drive penetration off of a scramble, but Managai does an excellent job of maintaining his spacing, rhythm jump shot, and on the opposite end, you want to get over the top of this screen, but by not doing that, you allow Gray to step back and jump into a nice rhythm three-point shot. Corey Gray, the senior from Houston, Texas, started his career at UIC, along with Eddie Denard, well-traveled. Senior for Chicago State. Another reach and foul, and again, it's on Gray, his second in a row, and he's saying, hey, it's not easy keeping up one-on-one -on -one with Doug McDermott. <laughs> Play defense with your feet, not your hands. That's what coaches have been preaching for a long time, more emphasis, especially this year. McDermott off his foot, and a turnover back to Chicago State. Managa, though, has been red hot for the outside. Being comfortable who you are as a player, knowing who you are, what value you bring to the team, and not trying to do things that are outside of your window of opportunity. And that's what Managa is able to do. He's not trying to do things and create off the dribble. He's maintaining his spacing, and when it's time for him to catch and shoot, he's doing an excellent job of finishing. He's got 15 points on five three-pointers. Three minutes into the second half, contact away from the basketball. This will go against Grant Gibbs. Got jostled with Matt Ross. That's number three on Gibbs. Avery Dingman quick off the bench for place. The 24-year-old Gibbs was granted a sixth year of eligibility in early July. Caught the team by surprise so much so they didn't have a roster spot. <laughs> Greg McDermott is paying for Doug McDermott's tuition. Doug's a walk-on, essentially. Oh, hey, he's probably the best college walk-on yeah. in the history of college basketball. 48 to 41, Creighton by seven. This is Gray against Chapman. Now, let's see, Ross was early, Intrico involved early in the game with the pick and rolls right now. Creighton doing a good job of locating Ross on the perimeter. Shot clock was winding down, and a moving screen called on Matt Ross. Well, it was a clear out as well, because Ross felt he had the mismatch inside against Chapman, got over aggressive, the elbow to the chin a little bit, calls the offensive foul. It's number three on Ross. Stays out there. Six Chicago State turnovers, eight for Creighton. Shadman trying to split the D. Contact. We'll see if it's Ross or Gray, and it's Gray. That's number three. If that was on Ross, that would have been his fourth. Well, the issue here is that Ross was in between because you know you have a shooter in the corner, but you know you have a guy that's, that's driving. The main goal is to stop ball, but you're caught in between just because of the outstanding spacing that Creighton has. Chicago State trying to keep up. They've committed four fouls. Look at McDermott. Body control, and he converts. Nicely done. He's got 20 points. Back comes Rosenberg. That won't go. And Creighton looking to run and add to this nine-point lead. Chapman for the trailer. Dingman, offensive foul. 
charge is drawn inside by Quinton Pippen. Yeah, and a rare mistake that you see from Chad. Normally he would pull up, make that pass, come to a jump stop. That time the momentum carried him forward, and now Pippen able to take the charge. Quinton Pippen last year was the Great West co-defensive player of the year. There's a reason they call him the junkyard dog. Scotty Pippen's nephew has scored nine. Chicago State with the basketball, still within single digits. Well, how smart of a play is that? Now you negate an easy two points for Crate. Off the miss by Denard. Here come the Blue Jays. For three, it's Rocky. He knocks it down with a hand all over him. Ethan Rocky with his second three. Keep in mind, he was in foul trouble for much of the first half. Excellent transition offense that time by Creighton, by Creighton, creating the drag three-point shot. Oh, what a pass and cut and finish inside from Pippen to Rosenberg. 53-43 Creighton, nearly five gone by since the break. McDermott looking for Dingman, pass knocked down. It's going to stay with Creighton when play resumes. McDermott has scored 20 in 11 of 12 games this year. For the outside and even in traffic, it's a 10 point game. Great leading Chicago State, 53 to 43. They had knocked down three of their first five shots here in the second half. A lot of it in transition. If you're creating, you talk about advancing the ball up the court. When you do that, once you freeze it right here, you have all of Chicago State's players below the free throw line. Because of the advance pass, now you have a walk-in three-point shot. Coaches always say this, and they, pre they preach this. The pass can beat the dribble. If you have it a chance, advance it up. If you don't have anything, set it back, set the offense back up. Look at what this guy, Ethan Rocky, has done when he's been set up for three. 92% of the shots he's made in his career have been from beyond the arc. You kind of figure you know what he's going to do. Yeah, but when, you, when you're playing with a team like Creighton, it's hard to take that away, okay? Because you, you're worried about multiple players who can shoot as well. Active hands for Duhan with the steal. Here's Denard inside, offensive foul. Charge drawn by Ethan Rogge. Now, once again, you put that left foot on the baseline, becomes a second defender, and now you slide your feet. You're in position to take a charge. It's number three on Denard. Mentioned he's well-traveled, began his college career at Illinois, Chicago, and then went to junior college, stint at New Orleans, and then made his way back to the Windy City with Chicago State. Ed Cohen, two-time Big Ten Player of the Year, Jim Jackson, our Fox Sports 1 crew from Omaha. Creighton with the 10-point lead on Chicago State. Dingman nearly stepped over the timeline, but was able to stay in the front court. And this is a really good test for Creighton, in particular on the perimeter, because you have some valuable lessons learned to see the corner three by a pressure team like Chicago State getting up into the jersey of Creighton forcing them to do things that they're not comfortable doing. So it's interesting to see how they continue to respond to that pressure. And Rogge's knocked down three threes. He has nine points. Six minutes gone by since the break. A 13-point lead for the Blue Jays, their largest. Denard inside. Not much room. Here's Rosenberg against Dingman. Well, you see the difference there? The pass out to Rosenberg was by his feet. So now you can't catch and shoot. Creighton is always in a rhythm shooting motion. Rosenberg Misfired, McDermott pulls it down. Looking ahead for Dingman. Rocky gets open, drains another three, and the crowd rises here in Omaha. Timeout, Chicago State. Creighton has knocked down 14 threes in this game. Season high, 21. Rocky again. Let's take a look at the AT&T Impossible Fee. Round one, 1998 NCAA tournament. 13 seeded Valparaiso trailed Ole Miss by two with two and a half seconds to play. And Hugh Bryce Drew with his father Homer. The senior hitting the buzzer beater for the win and Valpo getting the run to the sweet 16. Here we are 16 <laughs> years later. Great 
atmosphere here at the Century Link Center in Omaha, one of the best in college basketball. Creighton fourth in the country in average attendance and 17,466 on hand today. Uh, it goes back to the consistency that this program has been, ever, been able to play with over the years to, to continue to draw the kind of fan base that they have been able to do. Here's Pippen. Bucket won't go, but he's fouled by Dingman. Two shots on the way for Quinton Pippen. A lot of buzz in the area. Of course, Marquette coming to down for New Year's Eve. First year in the Big East, and they've known it's been coming since last March, but now it's two days away. Exciting time. I mean, and I haven't been to a situation where I had to uh, change conferences, but I can imagine what that excitement must be like. On Friday, it's a showdown between two of the most explosive offenses in the country. 13th-ranked Oklahoma State squares off against 8th-ranked Missouri in the AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic. Coverage begins Friday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox. Full-court pressure here for Chicago State. Chapman in some trouble. Managa scrambles over the mid-court line before the violation. Now, we've talked about the transition and Creighton being... No, extremely excited about joining the Big East, but the Big East should be excited about really having a quality program yeah. like Creighton come into your conference. All the intangibles that they bring, you're going to bring an outstanding fan base, okay? Outstanding coach, uh, a competitive environment. So when you're realigning schools and you, you start to look for who fits the mold, well, I mean, you couldn't do any better by bringing Creighton into uh, the Big East. Right now, the Blue Jays in the midst of an 11-3 run. Third in the preseason poll. They come into this game 9-2. Here's Rogge, step back three. That's good. Ethan Rogge's gotten hot. He's 5-5 five of five from three. And 15 threes now for the Blue Jays. Real subtle. Chapman set the screen and roll a little bit lower. Now that allowed him to get deep penetration inside, you have to recover, kick and, kick and shoot, draw and shoot on that time by Creighton. Duhan off the miss. Here comes Creighton. Chance to add to their largest lead of 62 to 44. McDermott, a little high low there. Knocked out of bounds by Ross. Rocky mentioned his prowess second in program history to Kyle Korver from three. Well, look how deep the penetration was by Chapman. He was below the free throw line. Now the defense is there, and Rocky was able then to replace himself on the perimeter right in the vision of Chapman for a nice little rhythm three-point shot. He's got four second-half threes. Seventh consecutive game with at least three from beyond the arc. McDermott falls down. He's in a tussle with Pippen. No call. Rocky again in and out. McDermott fighting for the offensive rebound. And he was undercut from behind by Pippen. Scotty's nephew picks up the foul. Great in control now. Up by 18 over Chicago State. Fox College Troops presentation of Big East Basketball brought to you by the New York Life Insurance Company. At Cone, back with Jim Jackson, pretty clear if you pass the ball well, good things happen. The art of making the correct pass. You're not trying to be fancy with it. And what Creighton allows itself to do is by passing the basketball on time and on target, now you get guys in shooting motions and rhythm motions that can be effective. And a lot of times that may be overstated in practice with coaches. Let's pass the ball better. Let's pass the ball better. But when it's done to perfection like we've seen this afternoon, it's a thing of beauty. And the New York Life keep good going stat. 18 assists on 19 made baskets, and a lot of those coming from three. But understanding who you are as a team is as important. Again, Creighton is not going to beat you off the dribble a lot, okay? But how they are going to beat you is keep you spread. When you help, they're going to make the correct pass. And then they're going to, they're going to kill you and make you pay when you overhelp. Doug McDermott has made Creighton history. 37 consecutive free throws. He has broke Booker Woodfox's record. So he's had a couple of milestones in this game, surpassing 2,500 points, and now 37 in a row from the strike. And you're off the hook because you didn't chase yeah. it. <laughs> so you're off the hook. Not we, but me. Yeah, you. You caught it. 20-point lead for the Blue Jays. 11.35 to play. And McDermott has led the way with 22. Missed scoop right there by Rosenberg. 
So streaks falling all over the place when you factor in Doug McDermott here in Omaha. And I don't know, you know, where Booker Woodfox is at, if he's still alive or whatever, but I don't think he'll send McDermott a, congratu congr a congratulation card saying that you broke my record. But we athletes are a little bit selfish. You like the record. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is Managa. Works it into Gibbs, lobs it out for Brooks. He lends in and converts off the window. And more terrific passing well, through the lane. It, was, it, it looks simple, but it really is hard to do. But when you play with unselfish players who are more than willing to give the basketball up, now one, two, three, four passes is generally when the defense breaks down. That's when you get open op opportunity. Matt Ross steps Matt back Ross. and drains it. Third three for the senior from Dixon, Illinois. McDermott against Duhon. Off the spin with the left, the switch, no, but he'll be at the line for two. Let's go back to the last possession. And sometimes you can overpass, but it depends on when you do it. In this possession here, you didn't take a bad shot. Bad shot. It's a pass. It's extra. Sometimes the extra pass can lead to a fourth shot, but in that last occasion, it led to an easier shot for Creighton. McDermott at the line. The streak continues. One more coming. Avery Dinman, Avery Dinman comes back in. Jahens Managa, he's a fan favorite. He's dubbed the MVP because he has the most valuable personality, and he's Doug McDermott's roommate. 39 in a row now for McDermott from the line. I just saw him with Woodfox, 808, 09. He's there, so he's, I think he's still alive and kicking the seed this right now. <laughs> he's good. <laughs> but he's got the record. 68 to 47 Creighton as we near the midway point of the second half. Johnny Griffin, number three in green, has come in for the first time for Chicago State. This is Corey Gray blowing by Brooks, got stripped, laid whistle. Jeff Anderson behind the play calls the foul on Avery Dingman. And Corey Gray turning down the pick and roll, recognizing he had the free side of the court to kind of attack the basket. A little late rotation that time on the back line for Creighton. Corey Gray at the line. He has scored six points so far. This is the first. Ring in the new year with a full day of Big East basketball presented by New York Life Insurance Company on Fox Sports 1. All ten teams will be in action for the start of conference play. It all begins at noon Eastern, New Year's Eve, only on Fox Sports 1. And it wraps up here in Omaha with Creighton and Marquette. Nine start local time. It is going to be wild here in Omaha. Raggi dishing inside to Artino. He's doubled, still goes up, doesn't get the bounce. Ross tracks down the board. Chicago State on the move. They're down 20 with 9.35 to go. Ross to the basket, no, but a blocking foul. Grant Gibbs trying to lock it down on the baseline. Instead, he's called for his fourth Grant foul. Gibbs. That's his fourth personal foul. The Blue Jays 15 and let's foul. see where Gibbs is at. Just a half a second behind of Seti. And, and I think that Creighton has Chicago been State. that way defensively, even though they're up, you say, you say we're, you're up 20 points. Well, <clears throat> coaches always break down the film a little bit different. They're going to find holes in what you may think is a pretty good game. Yeah. And some of the things defensively that Creighton has been a little slow on, Coach McDermott understands that later on that can cost us a game. So we have to clean that up a little bit better as we enter into big uh, East Conference play. They knew they needed a game in before they got to Marquette. They played Cal one week ago, won that game by 14. Ross now has 11 as he hits both free throws. And this was their tune-up before Big East play. And well, it wasn't pretty early at times, especially when McDermott went to the bench. Back up by 18, Brooks blocked by Ross. Reset here for Creighton. Well, the beauty about this game is that Chicago State is going to give you multiple looks defensively. Yeah. Offensively, they're going to try to attack you off the dribble. They're going to get out in transition, which forces Creighton to work on their own transition defense. So you get a lot of ways that you can work on different aspects of their game for Creighton. Shot clock at six. Managa stripped. Artino scoops it up and converts with some English. <laughs> he had a chance at three. Artino had to laugh at that. He's just like... <laughs> 
I was just here. You know, I, I'm a recipient of good hustle, and I was able to get an easy two and possible three. Look at right there. Look, just, yeah. Keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on the ball. It's, hey, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And he's got a three-point play. A couple of subs for Creighton. Back comes McDermott. He's joined by Zach Hansen. The other bigs, Artino and Rocky, will exit. Something subtle, too, that I've watched with Coach McDermott by taking Doug in and out of the game at different parts of the game, it allows him to stay fresh yeah. because he understands that teams are going to run multiple people at Doug and try to be physical with him. So it's important that he maintain his level of play by getting proper rest. That could be a two-minute spurt, a one-minute spurt here, or there, whatever it is. So that, that's a very smart and intuitive kind of uh, coaching move by Coach McDermott. Even when he was red hot to start this game. Well, yeah, because you want him to be fresh, in particular late in the game. Off the strip, Digman ahead for McDermott with the left hand, almost converted on the alley-oop. It's going to stay with Creighton here. Now, I saw something like this on Christmas Day. That was LeBron James. And uh, he caught it with the left hand. Head was closer to the rim, and he was able to dunk it. I'm not saying that McDermott was LeBron-like, but the play was almost like that. Almost. A little bit lower. Imagine the possibilities <laughs> next year, right? <laughs> At the next level. McDermott lobs it inside. Hansen collects, converts, and one. And no one happier with that pass than Doug McDermott squeezing it through the defense. Chance at three on the way. Well, Hanson provided the lead hand and exactly where he wanted the basketball. Keep your eye on Hanson right there. McDermott now just able to lob into the open spot. Kirk Harris in for the Blue Jays, number 21, Isaiah Zierden. Zierden and Karras. Have re-entered. Nate Duhon also coming in. He'll replace Ross, who picked up that last foul. That's number four. And Zach Hansen, freshman from Pierre, South Dakota. Chance to get his fifth point, and he does. Creighton has out-rebounded Chicago State in the second half, 11 to 2. Well, I'm sure at halftime, Coach McDermott drilled in his players' head little things that they must do. You know that carry forward and one was this, this Chicago State team is a smaller less physical team We need to rebound the ball better now that allows us to get out and run Duhan not much there good defense by Dingman as the shot clock goes to 10 Gray steps back his threes off the mark Dingman or rather zero there for the rebound Another board for Creighton. Remember, Chicago State was out-rebounded by 47 at Cincinnati in their last game. And that's Hanson off the miss by McDermott, converting. And it may look like a four shot by McDermott, but he understood Hanson had inside position. So as the ball comes off, now you have a chance to get an offensive rebound. Not a bad plan B. Not at all. 76 to 50, Creighton in front. They've knocked down 15 threes, four for McDermott. He has scored 24 points at 18 at the break. Denard against McDermott. And some contact there. It's on number three for Creighton. Buddy is scoring, but he's also dished it off. And this was pretty. Hanson wide open. McDermott with the find. And Creighton in control against Chicago State. Seventeen thousand strong here in Omaha today. Doug McDermott has led the way for the Blue Jays. Twenty-four points, six of thirteen shooting. He's eclipsed twenty-five hundred for his career. Perhaps more impressively, Rocky and Managa each with five threes for Creighton. Efficient day all around offensively for Creighton. 
This will be Eddie Denard headed to the line. There is a Creighton-Chicago State connection. There's assistant coach James Farr seated next to Tracy Dildy, former Creighton guard whose claim to fame was hitting the game-winning shot with two seconds to go for the Missouri Valley Tournament Championship in 1989 as they beat Wichita State or rather Southern Illinois. The game was in Wichita, and that got them back to the tournament for the first time in eight years. Yeah, I'm sure mixed emotions that right there coming back into maybe not the venue. You see an easy two, <laughs> easiest two hands and probably will get all year, uh, but for far to come back. Proud of his alma mater, but <laughs> there is a game at hand. Yeah, exactly. He had the scout for this one. He said, I wasn't going to give that one up. Yeah. Denard on the drive, Hanson with the block. Denard, it lands off him out of bounds. It's going to be Creighton basketball. Hanson on defense and also rewarded here. Well, this time, Chicago State got all around at the opposite end of the court. No transition. And Hanson, he probably was surprised how open he was. And the ball probably couldn't get there fast enough in order for him to get an easy two. Pressure here from Chicago State with six and a half to go. You think about it, Chicago State right now is still working on something. You see the press still in effect. Well, they're working to try to perfect what they do well in order to get prepared for their conference season. So they're, they're teaching points, learning points on both sides uh, of the equation for Creighton and Chicago State. Fourth year for Tracy Dildy leading this program. They were in the Great West. They're now in the WAC. That's a league with an NCAA tournament bid. They're APR was down when he inherited this program, but they have eight seniors now who are on pace to graduate, and the program is certainly in the right direction. And this year, with five wins already and some good challenges in non-conference play, they could be set up very well in the way. Well, hey, you've been around enough to know that a lot of people talk about how education is important, but then their record reflects something totally different. Well, you just said it, that eight seniors on pace to graduate. When the, this program was dealing with some APR issues. So that tells you right there in, an, in, an, in, an, in itself how dedicated the entire coaching staff is to not only creating really good basketball players, but more, more importantly, well-rounded young men. How about Pippen? That was up and then finally through. So he fired it from deep, and he got the shooter's bounce and some. Quinton Pippen has scored 13 points. 80 to 53 Creighton in front, but the score not indicative of what the first half was. Chicago State was within seven at the break. Nonetheless, Creighton has led the entire way. Dingman in the corner, short from three. Ross scrambles to get the rebound. And, and what you won't see from this Creighton team, even though you're up by a large margin, they're going to continue to run their offense. Pippen, that was where we are from midcourt almost. Rebounds tracked down by Griffin. And Gray's call for the big step in the travel. Checking in for the Blue Jays, number four, Alex Olsen. Returning to the Chicago State lineup is number four. Check that number 10, Kirk Harris. Quinn Pippen, Scotty's nephew. He's a lefty, so they're different in that regard. But Scotty's sister is Quinn's mom. They both wear 33, and the team at times has actually gone to Scotty Pippen's house. He has an indoor gym, and they've been able to work out. Not bad. Nice. Sometimes in life, it's not what you know, is who you know. Right. <laughs> same city, same family, why not? And I played against Scotty for many years, and you're talking about a player that coming out of college, actually the Bulls fans kind of booed when he got drafted, but look at the career he was able to amass, one of the top 50 ever played. Unbelievable. Avery Dimon, that was a nifty shot. Leads back up to 29 for Creighton with under five to play. So Chicago State will get ready to join the WAC. Open conference play at Idaho on the 4th. And Creighton awaiting Marquette coming to town in two days. A wild one set for New Year's Eve here in Omaha. This is Ross off the bounce, blocked on the way up. Regathers, he ran right into Jeffrey Grizel in the corner for Duhon. A little more time there, Grizel with the rebound. Yeah, you talk about Marquette, Marquette, St. John's, two teams that were pretty much picked right there at the top. Kind of struggled coming out of the gate, but playing a lot better right now. Villanova, tough loss to Syracuse, yeah. but you see the makings of what they can do offensively. 
a lot of questions going into Big East season. Uh, but Creighton sitting in a very good spot, I believe, just because of the experience that they have and the multiple shooters that they have on the court. Here's Duhon on the drive, getting to the basket. Slammed down by Griffin. Crowd calling for offensive goaltend, but they'll count the basket and Johnny Griffin with the slam. A little athleticism that time by Griffin. Outstanding timing. 82 to 55, Creighton. High low for Grizel. He's in too deep, couldn't convert. Couldn't get his own rebound either, so it comes out to Quinn Pippen. Lost the handle, loose in front, and knocked out of bounds off of Chicago State. Well, some tricks pulled out of the bag here in Omaha today. Avery Digman, nifty move right there. The crowd learning how to spin a basketball from Digman. Braden in front over Chicago State. Weekend storylines in the Big East Conference. Villanova, number eight, falling to number two, Syracuse. They were up big early, up 25 to seven, but the Orange roared back. Xavier in the Skip Prosser Classic, getting the best of Wake Forest, and St. John's hanging in there now nine and three after edging Columbia. Yeah, how about the week that D'Angelo Harris had, averaging a little over 23.5 points a game, shooting over 60%. Again, you know, teams kind of, Finding their way a little bit as you enter into conference season, a little bit more confidence in Mojo. For Creighton, it's going to be Marquette. The final of five games here on Fox Sports 1, the New Year's Eve Marathon. It's going to start with St. John's and Xavier. It's going to be Gus Johnson and Bill Raftery. And once you know it, they're going to bust down to Villanova at Butler later on. It's 119 miles from Cincinnati to Indianapolis, Cintas Center to Hinkle Fieldhouse. And they're going to take Nick C., the winner of the Fox Sports 1 New Year's Eve road trip Twitter contest on the bus. That's going to be fun. Well, we talked about it earlier about what an exciting venue in college basketball Mecca you talking about Hinkley Fieldhouse the, the the aura of that old field house the feel of it is pure basketball and for Villanova to come in now with Butler you know it's it's going to be really time it's going to be exciting here where Hinkley Fieldhouse is going to be like we like to say off the chain yeah inside for Chicago State Karan Davis couldn't convert off the window both teams have emptied the bench here in Omaha. Final 235. Of course, Creighton and Marquette two days from now. They'll get to that game 10 and 2. They had to withstand some terrific early defense from Chicago State and a three-point shooting display from both sides, but they're going to pull out the victory. Devin Brooks wraps around and converts off the window. He is creative, isn't he? He is off the dribble. A little hesitation, but I thought the second half of this game, in particular, you know, around about the 15 minute mark, Trayton locked in defensively. Yeah. One stop, rebound, got out and scored. Stop, rebound, score. That's going to be the key, I think, for Trayton. It's not the scoring. They're going to have enough scoring and shooting. But can you, in the Big East, get con consecutive stops, which allows you now to either increase the lead or get back in the game? Look inside, nicely done. And it's Jared Demakos who slips behind the D and converts for his first points. Former walk-on at Green Bay. And now a redshirt sophomore with a nice release for Chicago State. Ed Cohen, Jim Jackson, our entire Fox Sports 1 crew from Omaha, where in two days Marquette comes to town. Here is Zierden. He knocks down the three for Creighton. That is number 16, tied for the most in the Greg McDermott era. Who doesn't shoot threes for this Creighton team? I mean, <laughs> you got guys that just come in ready to let it go and can knock it down. They hit 16 against Drake January 8th of 2013. Final minute 15, Creighton leading by 32. Demakos with nowhere to go. This is Joshua Batson seeing his first minutes. Shot clock at one, Demakos gets the rim, but nothing else. 
Time now for our Land Rover Player of the Game. He eclipsed 2,500. It's Doug McDermott. Really? I mean, that was I mean, now that was suspenseful right there when we kind of figure out who. It was. But here's the thing: is how about is how he goes about his work in his business. How many shots did he force? Not many. You know, in rhythm, and that and that's a credit to him maturity-wise and not trying to get out there and get 2,500 really quick, but, and also to his teammates. I mean, making the game easier on a player like Doug McDermott also makes it easier on them. Mo Buluaga Ogini, he goes by Mo, is at the line for two. And he banks in the first, crowd loves that. Here's what they love. Come New Year's Eve, Marquette and Creighton as we look at the Golden Eagles, 7-5. and five. Devontae Gardner leads them with 13.8 points per game. Pick number one, some tough losses along the way, and their backcourt, they're really feeling through their guard situation. Well, something's going to have to get. Marquette is holding their opponents to 62.7 points a game. Very good half-court defensive team. They're going to contest shots, they're going to rebound. So, for Creighton, key is, one, be patient, but also you have to figure out how to get some easy bastards yeah. against that Marquette team. Golden Eagles are first in the Big East in scoring defense, as you said, below 63 points per game allowed. And still trying to find their way through after losing Vander Blue yeah. and Junior Cadugan and Trent Lockett. Jameel Wilson, their starting point guard, nearly 12 points per game, second to Gardner. And Buzz Williams has always found ways, and people felt that he couldn't. And this team right now still in transition as they head into Big East play. The loss of Vander Blue is huge because... He that's something they didn't expect. So you can't prepare for that right. because you didn't recruit another guard to come in and kind of assume that lead point guard position or guard position as a score. So it, you just can't manufacture. That's why I think they've started off a little bit slower than anticipated. They can now officially look to Big East play. It's going to be a historic night. First Big East game for Creighton on Tuesday, but they take care of business here against Chicago State. 90 to 58, the final. Greg McDermott's team able to stay through Chicago State's fine seven point game at the break. They win it 90 to 58 here on Fox Sports 1. We'll talk to Doug McDermott after this. Another win for the Blue Jays here at home. 90 to 58 over Chicago State. And it's Doug McDermott who led the way with 24 points. Six shots made, he knocked down four from three and he eclipses 2,500 points before another sellout crowd. And he got going early, Jim. It was important, I thought, that Doug set the tone of the game early. And, and his teammates did an outstanding job of being patient, setting the screens with Doug, also patient himself not forcing the action and I'm sure we'll ask him if getting the 2,500 points was a goal for him which he'll say it wasn't but when you're a key player you come out you set the tone everybody else follows in all right, joins us right now, the senior Doug McDermott. So let's start there. Jim just said we figured that it wasn't something you were waiting on, 2,500 points, but how much did that open things up for you once you got it? Yeah, I didn't even know about it until I saw your tweet. So, uh, you know, it, it felt good to get it, but uh, that wasn't the main concern tonight. My main uh, concern was to get the win. Uh, we did that. Uh, I mean, it's just a great win. Uh, we need a lot of confidence going into Big East. Final score, uh, it's going to be tough. We have Marquette coming to town on a we'll see Tuesday night. It's going to be really rocking in here. Nine uh, the I think we got a lot better in this non-conference play. We're looking forward to the Big East. Reminder that standing room only tickets will go on sale at the Century Link Center box office New Year's Eve morning. That's Tuesday morning. They're capable of also scoring, but have had to fall, getting in position to be successful. How much easier does that make it on you to be more efficient? Makes it so much easier. You know, we have a veteran group here. Uh, Grant Gibbs does, he's, he's our glue guy. He gets us all open shots. Ethan Roggin can really stretch the floor, and that opens things up for me. You know, we